I've worked all over the world, working mainly on water, soils, desertification, reclamation, and sustainable development. I began to watch a growing panic spread through the media and through government that there was a global crisis at hand and pushing up temperatures to such a degree that it would have catastrophic effects. I was a little bit skeptical, so I began to examine global warming caused by CO2. I noticed that there was a relation between temperatures at ground and air level, the water concentration and the soil. I have watched the gradual transfer of water from the land into the oceans. The dry areas are ever increasing and the temperatures are going up because of that. Industrialised agriculture is not only stripping the water from the land, it is causing a rise in CO2. It's an indicator that the soil is suffering severe damage by the way that we carry out industrialised agriculture. If you examine soil, you will find many forms of bacterial life, you will find many types of organisms in the soil. However, you spray with glyphos, bombard it with fertilizer, they destroy the biological life of the soil. And the carbon is then left exposed and will actually oxidize away to CO2. Once that happens, the soil can no longer hold water. So if it rains, the water runs off carrying the soil with it. The soil beneath is panned and therefore the water cannot go into the aquifer. When the sun hits the soil, then you have a temperature rise and you can feel that when you walk outside on any sunny day. When the temperature rises in soil, the moisture evaporates and it takes the heat with it. So farmland, which is regenerative farmland, which has high carbon soil, will remain cool. Soil which has been given over to modern agriculture, lacking carbon, lacking moisture, will get very hot. The equations are almost hidden away in books, but you can look up the Penman equations, you can calculate the difference between a wet soil and a dry soil, and you can actually see that a dry soil will give you a big temperature difference on the land and in the air. Similarly in cities, where we have a high temperature rise because concrete absorbs heat and has no moisture to evaporate it away. So we're creating urban heat islands with cities and we're creating agricultural heat islands by the way that we treat soil. In the summer of 2022, we saw uh, quite a lot of interesting features such as fires in forests, drying out of soil so the farmers could not actually harvest their crops. In Europe, it was the worst drought in 500 years and it spread all across Europe. So hydropower went down, the nuclear power went down because of lack of cooling water and there was crop failure throughout Europe. And so the potential for disaster because of the water cycle that is being disruptive is enormous. My position is quite simple. The emissions that are causing the damage are coming from agriculture. The industrialised form of agriculture where CO2 is being lost from the soil and as a consequence of that loss, the soil cannot hold water and it is running off, off the land, the land is drying out and the temperatures are going up. And all of this is a result of government policy driven by the large agricultural conglomerates. You need to help nature put the carbon back into the soil by rebuilding the bacterial structure of the soil. If you do that, that soil can once again act like a sponge and absorb water. What is happening now is that these things are just being done willy-nilly with no discussion. And so this book is an attempt to redress that a little bit and to perhaps start the discussion going again because majority of people I feel do not just accept a very unscientific declaration that we must have net zero. 
The book was necessary to counter the complete closing off of scientific discussion. Control of our resources must go back into the community. You cannot keep charging more and more for water services, uh, for sewage and closing down energy systems without proper discussion and without allowing the communities to take control of what is fundamentally their assets.